Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the City Update. I'm your host, Mark Aaron, Multimedia Design Manager for the City of Danville. Today we're talking economic development, but we're going to focus on the growing number of international companies that are deciding to call Danville home. We currently have nine international companies operating here in the City of Danville. On today's show, we're going to highlight each one of those companies, bringing you up to speed on the progress that they're making here in the city. And because we're seeing this growing number, just a couple of weeks ago, our Office of Economic Development held a seminar on the World Trade Center Association. This is a non-for-profit organization that assists companies in world trade. Had a great turnout for that seminar. In the second half of the show, we're going to talk with an individual, George Scott, who's the vice president of Batali uh, Sportswear, a company that has recently located in Danville. George has been a member of the World Trade Center Association for many years. He's going to talk about the benefits of that association um, and things of that nature in the second half of the show. But in the first half, I want to touch on these international companies. So joining me today is Jeremy Stratton, our Director of Economic Development. And Jeremy, welcome to this week's show. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me on the show. And um, I was surprised to see the number of international companies that we currently have here in Danville. I guess I, individually, you know, I'm familiar with these companies, but uh, a total of nine here in the city of Danville. Why do you see uh, a growing number of international companies want to locate here in Danville? What, what do you uh, attribute that uh, success, I guess, to? Well, we're truly becoming an international city, Mark. Uh, we do have nine companies here from nine different countries, and I'm including LifeBat with, with ties to, from Taiwan. And the reason why we're centrally located on the East Coast, mm -hmm. and for a lot of these uh, out-of-country companies, they, they want to have a presence on the East Coast, the most populous part of the United States. And we, we can reach all the way down to Florida and all the way up to New York, uh, where most of the population centers are within a day to day and a half drive, right. and that's very important. So plus, we're also in the eastern time zone. Okay, so that's a big selling point for us. Plus, low our, plus our low cost of operating costs, okay. which are very significant versus if you want to locate in uh, Greensboro or, or Richmond. Right. Now, I heard you mention in the seminar that uh, a lot of your recruiting has been done overseas recently. You spend actually more time over there than you really have, say, in New York City recruiting companies to Danville. Uh, can you expand on a little bit of that and uh, your travels recently? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, as I said, uh, we've made several stops in Europe uh, in connection with different leads we have working with the state of Virginia. In fact, uh, we went over to Poland before with uh, Governor Kane and had dinner with several companies in Warsaw. And we're, we're even two years later, we're, we're seeing uh, uh, some fruits of that labor. Uh, the growing side we're seeing is over in Asia, and that's because of our ties with LifeBat. And also, uh, new Governor McDonald has uh, several cabinet members that who uh, grew up either in Taiwan and, and Korea, uh, but are naturalized citizens here in the U.S. and work in the governor's cabinet in economic development. And you talk about the contacts that are made, these face-to-face -face meetings and how they're so important. Can you, can you elaborate on that, you know, going and meeting these individuals face-to-face, -face, even if it takes, you know, a week at a time to do so? It's so important, especially in the Eastern culture, to have face-to-face -face meetings for them to trust you. You, you can't do it through Skype or through right. the computer. You've got to go over there and actually visit. And last December, uh, Ken Bowman from Pennsylvania County and I went over to Taiwan for a visit and had a very successful visit. Not a lot of people have gone over to Taiwan to do recruiting. Right. Uh, we saw a lot of companies are excited that we were there. Yeah. So this June, uh, next month, I'm going with uh, the governor's people over to Beijing, Hong Kong, and Taipei. Beijing and Hong Kong to make some new contacts in Taipei. We've had uh, several companies that wanted us to come back. Great. And, and you keep mentioning the, the governor's uh, cabinet, individuals in the, gun, the governor's office. Talk a little bit about um, the governor's role in this because I know he sent uh, Lieutenant Governor Bowling down. I know they have a presence here in Southside Virginia about once a month now. Um, and, and we're really glad to see that here in Southside Virginia. Uh, governor McDonald has really taken it upon himself, as the previous governors have, mm -hmm. to, to really change the way we do economic development to get new business here in Southern Virginia. In his cabinet, he has uh, Peter Sue mm -hmm. and also Jimmy Ree, and he has uh, Jimmy Chang, who's, uh, who's the head of commerce and trade. Right. And all those three individuals have a lot of business ties in the Far East, and so we're, we're seeing a lot more attention paid to that where w previously there wasn't. Now, why do you think uh, this international boom, uh, are these companies just more willing to relocate and needing to expand versus what we see here in the United States nowadays? Well, I think in the United States you've seen a saturation of market. Uh, mm -hmm. Companies in the U.S. can't, unless they have a totally new project, a totally new product, 
they're not going to necessarily expand in the U.S., and they'd rather go overseas to get new markets. Right. Well, that's the same thing over in the, in the Orient. Companies in Korea reach a certain point, and in order for them to grow beyond that, they have to come to the U.S., right. and that's what we're seeing is that other countries invest in here. Right. Now, I know you've worked with a lot of companies um, in your many years of economic development. Um, what are some of the benefits of working with an international company? I, I think it adds a, a, an extra layer of texture to okay. the Danville community. I, I think it opens up a lot, a lot of doors. Uh, it, it changes the way people look at the world. And I think that's so important for our community going forward. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of these international companies that are currently located here in Danville. And, and most of these uh, I'm familiar with and our viewers may be familiar with. I know at least four or five they'll be real familiar with. Some may be new to them. So I, that's why I'd like to cover all of them on today's show. But the first one is, is Nestle. And I know m most of our viewers are familiar with Nestle, but I didn't realize that they were based out of Switzerland. Yes, that's, that's a, not people realize that. Yeah. It's been a very steady uh, company here that's mm -hmm. steadily added on to their building, right. had cap new capital investment, maintained their employment numbers, been a good employer here in Danville. And Very good. Very good. Now, uh, another one is a, a new company that is located in the cyber park, and that's Canadian Bank Note, CBN. Obviously, they're based out of Canada, but they've uh, been real successful here in Danville. Now, what all do they do for our viewers who may not be familiar with CBN? Canadian Bank Notes has the contract for the Virginia's driver's license. They keep a very low profile on purpose. Right. Now, if you get your driver's license, it comes from Danville. Yeah. Uh, there's some extra security encryptions put on the driver's license, so mm -hmm. rather than give it to you directly, they have to uh, go through all the security checks, which they do in Danville, and then they mail you the mail you license. So it's being mailed uh, straight out of the Danville facility? Absolutely. Very good. Now, how many uh, employees do they have? They have 15 people right okay, now. Okay, 15 people employed. Okay, very good. Now, of course, uh, Tel Vista, most of our citizens are probably familiar with that. They pass by it there on 58 East um, regularly, uh, a large facility there. And I know they've been in operation for how many years? Uh, about five years. Oh, and right. There's another company that's continually grown. Uh, a, lot of a lot of people don't realize that they're a Mexican company. Right. Have added contracts and they've been a good company here. Yeah, now. Was, um, about six months ago they added a brand new contract. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Very good, very good. And how many employees do they have? Uh, they're about company? 800 employees. 800 employees, very good. Now, they have expanded once or? They, they've expanded once and they've just added a new customer. Right. Um, that was in their own new doing. Contract. Okay, very good. Um, another one is, is COM40, and I haven't heard a lot about COM40 in the recent months, but I know they're located out off of um, Kentuck Road, and the new facility there was the old um, Universal Leaf building there that they're located in, and they're, they're from Poland. And explain to our viewers what they're manufacturing there. COM40 has the contract to produce uh, mattresses and sofas for IKEA. Okay. And, and the interesting thing about them is their mattresses, they have a, a line where you can roll up for easy to carry out of the store, and you get back home, unfold it, and it'll rise up like a regular mattress. Okay, and I know they're only uh, producing mattresses now, but I and guess and future... And too. And sofas, and future plans are to expand that lineup, is that correct? Yes, in fact, they've, uh, they're finishing off the building. They're using a local contractor, Blair Construction. Right. Uh, you can see them out there right now. They're finishing the rest of the building. And they've done a, a tremendous... Uh, a lot of work on that building. It used right. to be in shambles mm -hmm. and smell like tobacco, and you would never right. recognize it as a tobacco processing facility. And it's right beside the old Diamond facility there? Yes. Right off of Kentucky Road. Great. And now, how many employees do they currently have? Last count we had was about 160. 160. So they're right on target. Yes. Very good. Very good. And, uh, of course, uh, most of our viewers are familiar with Sledwood. Um, and I know they... Um, are looking to expand in the future, but they're currently in phase one. Is that correct? Of yeah, their they've, operation? they've completed phase one. They're at okay. right up 300 employees right. and about uh, 92 million capital investment. Very good. And uh, so they're right on target. And they're manufacturing, of course, their furniture that you sell in IKEA stores yes. across the globe. And uh, they're located, where, where is their location? They're, they're in Cane Creek Center. Right. And that's right off of 5080s for our viewers who may not be familiar with the Cane Creek Center. That also houses Yorktown Cabinetry as well. Absolutely. Right. And then another new company that we uh, made an announcement a little over a year ago was Japan Tobacco International. Uh, some local individuals are going to be running that uh, operation here in Danville. And they are actually located um, in the Cyber Park, former Dan River Distribution Center there that the we've um, uh, revitalized. And they're working on that currently. 
Tell me a little bit about what's going to take place there um, at Japan, Japan Tobacco International. Uh, basically, th there's a taste for tobacco that's grown in the East Coast in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the soil and the humidity, it has a certain taste of the tobacco. So this enables some of the farmers to sell their tobacco uh, to JTI. They're yeah. going to process it, take, the, take it and process it so it can be um, made into cigarettes. And they're not making the cigarettes here, they're just processing. Uh, and then the take the processed stuff and ship it out of the country. Very good. That was a Japan company, and I know they're, they're on target to start up operations towards the end of the summer. I know they're working hard out there to get everything up and operational, but in the summer, still target date for them? In the summer, and I want to remind us, it's uh, 39 full-time jobs and about 150 seasonals. Seasonal uh, and I know that they, they're taking a look at some people right now. Very good. Great. And then um, two other companies, I guess. One is uh, Essel Propac and then Arista Tubes, which is a city area of Essel. Uh, they've been in the city, gosh, I would say, what, eight or nine years? Uh, Essel's Essel? about seven, and seven, I said Arista's four or five. Four or five. So th I know they're doing very well here in the city, and they're out in Airside Industrial Park, correct? Yes. All right. And then the Essel United Kingdom, is that where? Uh, Essel's from India. India, And Arista, okay. which is a partner to them, is out of the United Kingdom. Okay. Very good. And um, Essel Propac, they're manufacturing laminated tubes, I guess, like the toothpaste tubes that yes. we can buy off the shelf. And what is Arista manufacturing here? In uh, the, the tops. The tops. Okay, very good. And they have expanded one or two times? Um, Essel's expanded a couple of times. Right. Arista is getting on their feet. I mean, they're okay. reaching profitability and, and doing some great things now. Very good. And the last one I want to mention, and you kind of mentioned this um, a little earlier in the show, this company, and that's LifeBat. Uh, can you explain to our viewers who may not be familiar with the, what this company is actually doing, where they're located here in the city of Danville? LifeBat, the couple, uh, the lady, uh, Michelle, she's originally from Taiwan. Okay. Uh, her and her husband, they were from Las Vegas, and they moved over to Danville. Okay. Uh, they live in the county right now, and they're waiting, they're going to move into Old Belt One building, which is next door to Luna okay. on Bridge Street. We, we're, we've uh, had a prolonged construction of their facility right. that the Industrial Development Authority of the city owns. Okay. And it was bec we had a rough winter. Right. Uh, we're trying to get the offices done here within the next two months for them to move in where they're going to assemble and sell lithium ion phosphate batteries. Right. Now, will they be manufacturing that here in Danville or will those just be their, their headquarters and office? Uh, they, they may eventually manufacture but they're essentially going to take materials that they get from Taiwan, assemble them, and sell them here. Great. And I know that that's a good segue because uh, the owners of LifeBat were actually at the seminar. Is that correct that you that's held? That's um, And had a lot of great questions for the World Trade Center Association members that were present in Danville. So I'd like to transition now into that and talk a little bit about that seminar. As I mentioned, the World Trade Center Association, a not-for-profit um, organization that assists companies kind of like LifeBat in world trade and um, exporting things of that nature. Um, tell our viewers a little bit of why economic development uh, decided to host this seminar and get our local companies familiar with the World Trade Center um, Association. One of our newer companies, Batali, which is in the process of moving on 753 Main Street, mm -hmm. does a lot of uh, exporting to Africa and Europe, a lot of their sportswear material mm -hmm. and, and clothing. And they and one of the members, George Scott, is a member of the Atlanta World Trade Center, and so they have an interest in the World Trade Center possibly coming to Danville because they give a chance for a lot of contacts and networking. It, it's invaluable, to, especially when you're dealing with international business, to have your contacts and a network built up. Right. And you talk about exporting, and I was not real familiar, to be honest, with the World Trade Center um, Association, but exporting is a multi-billion dollar business here in the United States. I think a lot of us normally just hear about imports and importing uh, materials, things from China, but exporting is a big business. Exporting is a huge business, and typically ex jobs that involve companies that export are 30% higher than jobs that just right. trade within the United States. If you want to look at a community that's transformed itself with a lot of exporting jobs, it, it would be Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. They're on the ropes when the base closed down there, right. but they've rapidly transformed themselves into a thriving port with a lot of companies that export. And right. it's amazing what's gone on in Charleston, South Carolina. 